You'll need a Phillips number two screwdriver, either electric or standard, up to you. A pair of cutters and kit. Inside the kit, the 28CC17 is the Korea Touch Scanner touchless solution. You'll have the scanner procedure inside that comes with it. But also you'll need the software update procedure in order to do the whole install of the scanner. So in order to play with the machine safely, we do recommend turning the machine off. So you unlock the machine door. And you turn the machine off using the main switch at the bottom of the machine. Next step, of course, is to unplug the unit from the outlet. Once the machine is powered off, remove the back panel of the machine. Already removed some screws, there's only one left. And put the panel aside. Now you need to remove that small black trap door in order to feed the scanner's cable through the machine up to the outside. This panel is held by two screws on the inside of the door, or in the inside of the cabinet. And then you can put the cap out. Either you drill a hole through the center of the cap in order to feed the cable, or you can put the cap aside. Next step is to install the scanner. So you can open the door of the unit. So you take the RJ45 connector, the biggest one, and you feed it through the channel at the bottom right of the machine. So biggest connector towards the back. So this is the view from the back of the machine where you fed the cable through the channel from the front of the machine to the back. So you just grab the cable out from here and then you feed it through the opening on the side. Once you've got the cable out from the side of the machine, you need to install the scanner itself. You'll see inside the box, there is a small cap included. So you must connect the cable to the scanner. And then make sure you take it on the right side. There is a groove on one side of the cap that you need to clip in order to keep the wire safe. Next step in order to connect the USB cable to the CPU board you need to remove the CPU cover board, uh, cover panel. And to be able to feed the cable you need to cut a notch on the panel here in order to feed the cable through. So using a pair of pliers or cutters, I'm sorry. Just cut it up like this, put that aside for now. And inside the box, along with the other cable, you had that USB adapter that you need to connect to the board. So you got two terminals to hook up to the board, a black and a white. Black is the data you connect to the top right. And the power cable that hooks up to the top left. Then you take the cable and you hook it up to the USB adapter like this. So now you can shove the wire on the inside of the door to hide it out.
And then you can use a zip tie like this to hold the cable. so as to prevent the cable from going everywhere. Once you've fed the cable, you can turn the machine back on, so you just plug it back to the wall and turn it on. Once your unit is powered back on, you need to create a backup of the your machine. Go into the service mode, it's gonna be item number 7.4. Seven import export. Seven point four backup. Use an NT USB stick. And connect it to the USB port on the CPU board. And you just click on export. You confirm, and once the backup is completed, click on eject USB stick and remove it from the board. Once you backed up the machine and you remove the USB stick, just go back to the main menu and turn the machine off. Provided with the kit came two USB keys. And there's one that is labeled SYS for system. So you need to insert that key first into the USB port on the CPU board. And then you turn the machine back on. When the system is updated, you'll get the message installation successful, remove USB stick. Remove the system key. And install the app key on the same USB port. And then you let the app key load. And again, it's going to take a few minutes. When the upload is successful, you'll have this message. Update successful, remove USB stick. So you just pull the USB stick out. And the machine will reboot. Once the machine has booted up, you need to finalize the install. In the first screen, you'll need to select the country. It's going to be USA. Click Next. Select your configuration. Click Next. and the machine will finalize the complete boot up. So once the install is complete, you can go back onto the menu and change the machine name and asset number. You go under machine information, item number four. Then you go to 4.4 machine number and name. Type in your serial number, machine name, and asset number provided by Cafection. Once done, you'll save. And using the backup key that we used earlier, we're going to restore our data onto the machine. So you go to 7.4, backup. Machine asks you to put the USB stick. 
So put the USB stick back on the CPU board. And you select your complete backup. Click import. Once you've selected your backup, click OK. And again, this process might take a few minutes up to 10 minutes. Along the process, you confirm. Then you can select what you want to reset. Once you've made your selection, it's going to proceed. Once you've done all this, finalize your install. Remove your backup USB stick. Make sure that the cable is neat and clean and reinstall the, uh, reinstall the CPU cover. And when putting the cover back, make sure not to pinch one of the cables and make sure that the notch that you've cut on the CPU cover is where, or the cable is where the notch is before you click. Next step is to activate the scanner. Go to the service mode. Go to item number 11, touchless option. 11.1 touchless application. You go to settings and you put a check mark to enable the touchless. Then you save. Next, you go again to 11.1 touchless. Eleven point three, and there's a line that's going to confirm that the scanner is now enabled. Once you saved, you need to calibrate the scanner using that sheet that's got four barcodes. You can fold it to make a small square. And you just scan each QR code with the scanner. So you do this for the four barcodes, and the process is complete.